All right. Angela, my, my aunt lives in Athens. She teaches uh, there at the university. All right, Florida, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Illinois. All right, another Georgia. Again, if you're just joining us, we're gonna get started here in a couple of minutes. If you go ahead and put your name and where you're from in the chat, and we can see where everybody is joining us from today. Hi, Loretta. If you're just joining us, we're going to get started in about a minute. Uh, go ahead and put your name and where you're from in the chat and we'll get started here shortly. Thanks for joining us. All right, well, it is one o'clock Eastern time. I'd like to everybody, thank you for joining us for another of our uh, series to the Beyond School Hours National Education Conference. My name is Elizabeth C. I'm the Executive Director of Teaching and Learning at Foundations Inc. Um, before we get started, I'll just give you a little bit of background about Foundations. We are a national education nonprofit. We're located in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. And our mission is to improve the quality of education by building educators. We work across the school day with after school programs, schools, districts, and states in order to build a brighter future for every child every day. So if you're interested in learning more about our organization, you can take a minute to follow us on social media and Paula will put those um, in the chat for us. Uh, you probably already know us from our signature professional learning experience beyond school hours. Our conference is held each year in February, and we are so excited that in 2022, we're going to be back in Orlando, February 23rd to the 26th. So we hope you will consider joining us uh, in 2022. So, I'd now like to welcome our presenters, Chastity Celestine and Adrian Izagiri from Harris County Department of Education. They are gonna share some strategies for incorporating social media into after-school programs and daily activities while promoting safe practices and productive online interactions. So thanks for being here, Chastity and Adrian. Good morning, everyone. We're excited to be Good here. Morning. Uh, welcome to our session. We are so glad you are here this morning. You could have been doing anything, but you decided to show up for us. So we're going to do our best to show up for you and try to make this as entertaining and as fun as possible, even in a virtual setting. Um, we're talking about something really fun. And so I'm excited to share what I know. Are you excited to share what you know? Definitely excited. I think as you guys have seen uh, in the past couple of days, uh, between foundations and ourselves, we have been trying to promote this session on social media because that's what it's about. And we wanna make sure that you guys know how you guys can engage uh, with all the youth uh, within after school and out of school time so that you guys can use this as a tool 
uh, for your programming and your fun delivery that you have with all the students that you work with. Yes, and before we get started, we just want to say thank you uh, to Beyond, you know, just Foundations Inc., just for having us here, allowing us to host this webinar today. Um, it is an honor and a pleasure to share what we know with other after school professionals. And feel free throughout this entire session to let us know what you know. It, we're life learners, and so we're learning from you as you're learning from us. And we're just so grateful for the opportunity. And let's get started. bear with us on this technology thing. All right, so uh, the presentation overview. So the objectives here is for you guys to learn how to engage with youth on social media platforms virtually, create educational opportunities and build relationships with youth through social media interactions. Participants will learn about safety precautions and etiquette while navigating youth engagement on social media. Now this training is for those who have the capacity to incorporate, you know, so um, not just social media, but technology within their programs. And like I said, everything that we present to you today is simply going to be ideas, but we would love to learn from you as well. So if you have something that you feel like you should share with us, please feel free to do that. Um, we're going to try to channel all the questions towards the end of the presentation, just so we can kind of get through it because an hour goes by very quick, you know? So we just wanna make sure that we get through the material as much as possible. But if we do not, in the event that we do not, we will make sure you have this PowerPoint. We'll email it out to you and you'll have access to it. And if you have any questions outside of that, feel free to contact us. And most importantly, as we introduce these ideas, we want you to also visualize this and personalize it for your own program. Again, this is a brief introduction of ideas so that you can take them and run them and make them your own. Again, this is a tool that you can that you can utilize. Oftentimes when we buy things at the store, you take it and you make it yours in your home or space mm -hmm. or whatever medium you're utilizing for. So that's what we want you guys to take uh, from today is these ideas and make them your own. Yep. Yeah. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is a social media competition for an icebreaker. So I want you guys again to imagine what you would do in a setting if you were in person or if you had to operate online. So this is a cute little fun game that you could do with your kids. You can break them off into groups or you can break them off into breakout rooms, depending on, you know, what platform or what way you're administering this type of activity. Um, but the idea is that they would then go on and let me see if I can click. Can we click on? Okay, so you can kind of see just from the video, like what's going on. But the idea is for them to basically write down as many social acronyms as possible in a given time. And then the team with the most wins. Now I have actually done this with youth and it is very fun. They get very competitive. And a lot of the times you find out different acronyms that you didn't even know was a thing. So it's just kind of a way to kind of co get connected with them and, you know, be in on the trends as far as like what is being said and how it's being said. And, you know, we all know that you can't you can't just come on social media sometimes with the correct English, the correct way. You need to come in with uh, emojis. You need to come in with the acronyms. And so right now we're going to demonstrate that for you just to kind of give you an idea of how this looks. So, Adrian, I am going to put you on a timer. Okay. Go ahead. I'm gonna put you on a timer. I'm gonna give you, let's say, mm, 30 seconds for you to write as many social acronyms as possible. On your mark, get set. Mm -mm, Simon didn't say go. <laughs> All right, go. All right. Go ahead. Go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm, 15 seconds left. Oh, no, I need that already. Um, all right. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh. All right. Let's see how many did you get. So you got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Well, seven, thirty seconds. That's not bad. All right. So let me do it. Let me do it. All right. So that we can figure out who's the winner, and then that person has to explain. You can't use they're... mine. Right. Okay. All right. Should we take yours now, or? 
Oh, I'm just going to write under it. Give me a different color marker. Let's do this. All right. Are you ready? Wow. Get set. Okay. Go. Okay. Um, uh, uh, I already used that one. Okay. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> hold on. What I know. 15 you seconds. Um, 10. Stop it. Stop giving me the timer. <laughs> Um, I can't think of I. Oh, I'm gonna let it go. Time. I'm gonna let it go. I do this all day, and now for some well, reason under this Cassidy's pressure, I could not think of three. it. I couldn't think of it. Okay, this is this is embarrassing. <laughs> Cassidy got three, I got seven, so I think it's a little clear. Uh, but the, the main thing that you can take from this, um, social media is also a form of communication. And so this is a way for you to understand how youth are communicating with each other. Oftentimes they have their own codes, their own little way of speaking to one another. And it's an engaging way for you to understand how they're communicating and what uh, some of these definitions mean when you find one of these acronyms and you're like, what does that mean? You'd be surprised to find out what some of these things mean. Sometimes they're a little questionable. Other times they're very uh, engaging and innovative uh, to know how they're defining different things. Um, so this is just one way to kind of introduce uh, social media and acronyms uh, to yourself as well along with students so that you know, hey, we want to engage with you. How are you communicating? And figure out how that communication is taking place. Yes, so let's go over what you actually wrote down so they can know. Okay, so my first one was LOL. I think everyone knows what that means. Laugh out loud is used almost at the end of every text message. Uh, the second one was LMBO, uh, which is laugh my butt off. Uh, sometimes there's an A uh, in there, which is a different meaning. Uh, out of professionalism, we won't say it, but of course, these are things that students are writing. So we got to keep that in mind. Um, GOAT, greatest of all time. I think that's big for, um, for students who love sports. It's often utilized that. Greatest of all time is GOAT. Uh, TY, which is thank you. Uh, ROFL, that means rolling on the floor laughing. Uh, I know that's one that I've seen sometimes, and the first time I was introduced to it, I was like, I don't know what that means. R-O-F-L, rolling on the floor laughing. J-K, just kidding. And I-L-Y, which is I love you. Chastity, what did you write? Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I got the L-M-B-O, laugh my butt off, like you already said. I got the B-R-B, which is be right back. Um, I also have the SMH is shaking my head. I thought of some that was, I thought of some, some acronyms initially, but they weren't so appropriate. So then I was like, okay, no, I can't put that one. But at the same time, I am somebody that's actually really bad with acronyms. So a lot of the times I ask my friends, like, okay, what does this mean? Okay, what does this mean? Because I feel like there's always a new word being made. There's always a new acronym being made. Um, I'm not sure who's controlling the room, but I see that we have some people waiting and I wasn't sure if we should. It's found it. foundation is taking it. They're taking it? Okay, wasn't sure, okay. All right, so the platforms that youth cannot live without. So as much as, it, as much as we want this to be completely engaging, we want it to be a little informative. So with that being said, YouTube. So you got YouTube, TikTok, and Snapchat. These are the number one platforms for youth right now. And youth is encompassing anywhere between Generation Z and Generation Alpha, which is the generation born after 2010. So that's probably some of your younger ones if you work with that age group, but I'm just kind of making you abreast. Now they haven't become of age, so we don't actually know what's gonna be popping in quotes for them. I'm gonna try to use some trendy words throughout this presentation to kind of make it more fun, but we don't know what will be popping when they become of age. But right now, Generation Z, they're into these three. Now, the legacy platform, Facebook is still number one throughout the world. And that's because Everyone use it. It's the long. It's probably one of the longest standing ones. However, YouTube is right behind it, and again, it's because everyone uses YouTube. And we're streaming, so hello to all the YouTubers. Hi, <laughs> all YouTubers. So everyone uses YouTube, so that is also why it's number one. 
it depends on how you look at social some people don't consider YouTube to be social media. So when I'm doing my research, sometimes YouTube pops up, sometimes it does not. But in any case, I wanted to include YouTube because youth are on YouTube and they do use this platform pretty often. The next thing we wanted to talk about was TikTok. Now, TikTok is one of the fastest growing social medias that's out there right now. It is not number one, but it is fastest. It is the fastest growing and therefore it is the youth's favorite right now. You can do so many different things on TikTok and we'll get into that as we dive into each individual platform. And then for Snapchat, Snapchat is actually number one. Yes. Snapchat is over TikTok still. Yes. Currently. <laughs> Current. Currently. But, but I was doing a lot of research and right now TikTok is going to be the next big thing. So we can probably already see that from the pandemic and after the pandemic, I mean, we're still in the pandemic, but early in the pandemic, TikTok really picked up its number. They really picked up its users. And so they are really a force to be reckoned with. I definitely think that they're over Instagram right now, but millennials use Instagram, not necessarily Gen Z. One thing to keep in mind uh, is that all of these things are current as we speak in terms of the research that we did, but at any point in time, these things can change. We've yep. seen these, we've done multiple social media presentations where our fluctuation was where Twitter and Instagram were at the very top, followed by Facebook. Uh, and now we're talking about YouTube, TikTok, and Snapchat. Yeah. So all of these things always change. Um, and again, it's just a matter of staying in touch with your youth and knowing what yeah. they're utilizing so that you can get on those mediums. That is one of yeah. the important things is follow where the youth are going so you can be present with yeah. them. So either way, go, regardless if you knew which one is number one, number two, number three, it doesn't matter. They're using all of these simultaneously. They're using all of them at the same time. And so we want to equip you a little bit of, for that. Um, this workshop isn't necessarily going to help you as far as navigating that that particular medium itself. Um, that's another conversation for another day. But this is to just kind of give you some ideas of what you could use with the platform. And so I really hope it's helpful. So as we dive right into it, let's talk about YouTube. Again, number one, as far as entertaining, YouTube allows users to upload, view, rate, favorite, share, subscribe, you name it, YouTube does it. Um, it, it is used for, you know, it's user generated, it's user friendly, and most of the time videos are uploaded individually. But the youth interest, so this is what we're really focusing on, on in this presentation is the youth interest. Tutorials, games, and blogs. Kids love to see how to do something. It, it doesn't matter if it's academic related, if it's, you know, just some sort of lifestyle related thing, if it's even how to like play a game properly, how to build something, how to make something. You, tutorials are popular, not just amongst youth, amongst all of us, but youth love tutorials. They also love games. Um, I have seen a few youth myself actually getting on and cracking the codes and trying to figure out like how to beat a game or even just how to play it. And then vlogs. Vlogs, of course, that is like a very trendy thing right now um, on Instagram and on YouTube. People are documenting their life, their journey, what they're doing. Um, and it could be simple things. It could be simple things. It could be personal things. It could be academic things. It could be anything. But the idea is for you to take the youth interest and incorporate that into your activities in your program. One thing that I've seen a lot is that um, there's a lot of kids who have created a channel with the help of their parents, of course, yeah. and they simply sit there and review toys or games that they play. And you have other kids seeing these kids as they make their vlogs play with things. And it, so for us, or at least for me, based on uh, our staff that's here that have children, um, we've heard and seen these things and we're curious as to why is it that students are doing this? Why is it that kids are just watching other kids play? But it's also a way of understanding how kids are engaging again, uh, because that will determine how they will follow on something. Um, it sets a trend for them, uh, which is what social media is mainly about. It's usually about trends nine times out of 10. And so that's what kids are doing on YouTube a lot is they have their own channels and they're reviewing going to Disney or going to the mall and playing with this new toy that they got for Christmas and saying, I like this toy because it does this. 
I don't like this toy because it does that. Whatever the case may be, that's what they're doing on YouTube. And there is a tremendous following of kids seeing other kids do these things yeah. as well. Yeah, it's this thing on um, YouTube called I Follow Along. And it's simply like you literally following what someone else is doing. And that's a trend too. So it, it's, it's crazy. Like it's crazy how many different trends are out there, but they're out there in you know, we just want to kind of make you aware of them. Um, if you do not have a YouTube account in your program, you know, I don't know if it's a matter of just talking to your principal or whatnot, but it creating a classroom account can be very helpful um, in posting videos. And of course, they have to be appropriate videos. And we will talk later on about the some of the precautions that you need to take in order to create these classroom accounts. But it's definitely doable. I have seen it done. Um, and I've seen it done in a very safe and practical way, something that's just not going to be very daunting. YouTube isn't one of the platforms that you can kind of use a scheduler on, but it is something that you can, you know, like really control and upload in your timing and you control the narrative of what's put out there in regards to your program in your classroom. And one thing YouTube has done is they have created a kids section for YouTube. It's yeah. called YouTube Kids. YouTube Kids. So, and a lot of school districts are utilizing it. I've seen it here happen uh, around Houston, Texas and Harris County where we are at. So that's also one thing to keep in mind as you're trying to figure out that approach. Yeah. Okay, so for each, for each platform, we wanna give you some sort of activity. So one of the activities we came up with was the STEM challenge. So the objective in this activity is youth will interact with YouTube videos in order to successfully construct and test a STEM challenge through a virtual production competition. So the idea that I'm going to put quick steps on each of the challenges um, you know, I don't want to sit here and read through them because you guys are more than capable, um, but I'll just kind of give you just a quick overview of it. So basically the idea uh, is, is for the staff to go on YouTube and maybe find three STEM challenges. I like to use a oblique challenge, for example, that's how do you, that's making slime. So you can find three STEM challenges of your choice, and then you can have the youth kind of vote on which STEM challenge they would like to do, or you could have it to where they do... You, each youth can pick the one that they want to do. And then the objective is for the youth to then do that challenge, send you a video of doing that challenge. And then once you get the videos, the idea is then you can upload the challenge um, so that all the other youth can see the challenge that all the other students did and then vote on it. Um, and again, I think that this is something that is easily controllable. Um, you know, like you don't have to allow for comments. You could just allow for votes you know, if you want to keep it, you know, clean and friendly, um, so to speak. And then after, you know, the kids, um, after the kids vote, you know, whichever one was voted on the most, you know, you could always maybe the prize would be, okay, this person's um, STEM challenge gets featured on the classroom YouTube challenge for this month or this week or whatever have you. So that's just a quick little idea. I thought that was really cute that you could use as far as like, finding a way to incorporate YouTube into your activity and your program. And so to explain this, I got our lovely coworker slash curriculum specialist slash <sighs> help Chastity come up with all her activities. <laughs> Great person, greatest person in the Former world. Over teacher and educator as well. Over teacher, educator, everything. And she really kind of helped me bring this to surface and she did, I forced her to do this video. <laughs> I definitely did. So, um, Here's a video of it. How do we click it again? Okay, so what the students or the teacher would do is that they would come over here and this is editable. Um, the teacher can customize this to whatever STEM challenges they want the kids to choose from. The kids would pick that and then they would submit it and then it can be used so then the teacher could have a an idea of what all they want to um, put the tally is. And then what you can do, you might have to edit this part now, is that, I'm oh, sorry. Whenever you go to your Google Forms, then you can look at this as, oh, there you go, the responses. And it'll tell you the percentage of kids that you want uh, that want to do the STEM challenges. So the end of this video actually might answer a question that we have in the chat. 
is which is are there any ideas on how to keep track of attendance when using YouTube? Uh, this is a cross collaboration with Google and YouTube uh, that we kind of did. So as you can see, you can have the students based on the options you have available for them. Um, if you do do some type of STEM challenge or arts challenge, whatever it may be, uh, where they can indicate which activity uh, interests them and then you can uh, generate that link to be sent to them. And as you saw at the end of that Google form as well, you can keep track of, okay, I know I sent this student this. And then that also, when you look at the video that you posted or that they may have posted um, as well is looking at the number of views that gets you an idea of, okay, so many people have viewed this video based on my sending it uh, uh, the link of the YouTube video. Uh, in terms of activities that you may be putting out, I think that may be the best way if you're personalizing them and you're sending them strictly uh, to the students that are in your program. Uh, based on the number of views, you can tell how many students have viewed them. Um, it's a little difficult in terms of finding out who exactly may view them because there isn't that exact, YouTube is not set up in that way. But if you're being um, controlling of a platform and again, keeping it personal uh, to the number of students and who you're sending it to, uh, you have an idea how to keep track. And if you use Google, uh, with it as well, because Google and YouTube are part of the same family, part of the same company. Um, you can use both of these methods in order to, again, track the number of responses you received for a particular number of activities that you may have put out and that students registered and showed interest in. That may assist you uh, in how you can keep track of what uh, students viewed on your YouTube feed. Um, and this is not Google related, but another option if you did if you weren't really familiar with the Google Forms and really didn't want to deal with it, or maybe you don't necessarily love Google. Okay, that's fine. Survey Monkey is also another good option for you to kind of get that tally in that poll. And if you haven't used it, it's a free resource, you know, that a lot of teachers use. I know that I use it often. Um, it's a, just an easy way to go ahead and get, you know, something. Some sort of data that you need from people very quickly our next platform that we're going to explore is snapchat uh, snapchat is a messaging app that puts uh, a little time limit on pictures and videos that they that students or anyone who uses the platform shares uh, oftentimes we've seen that teens like this uh, app because it allows them to be goofy share embarrassing things that they may not willingly do so often uh, but it also creates a sense of privacy because it does go away after a period of time. And so there's multiple ways in, in which they can use it. But um, the interest again is the quick and private communication that they share. They're able to tell their stories, share their stories, where they're at, what they're doing, and it allows them to engage with their friends, family, whoever it may be that they have on that uh, platform. Uh, filters are often a big thing about that. When someone's bored and they're taking a picture, they can add a filter and have a crazy funny face that they might have as their profile picture for, I don't know, three, four months until the next new filter comes out. Um, and another thing is that uh, the camera quality uh, within Snapchat is also yeah. very popular uh, because sometimes it exceeds what may be present on any other application or their phone. It enhances it along with the addition of filters. Um, Snapchat, as we mentioned, is the number one currently right now uh, app and social media uh, as it stands today. And there's, again, so many ways, but privacy, um, it, it allows that community to be happening with students. They have their own chats. Uh, you know, we have our phones with us oftentimes, and our phones have text messages. But because sometimes our phones are equipped with parental things, uh, students and kids are trying to find different ways to keep things private from their parents or whoever may be controlling their phone. So then that's kind of when they move into other applications. And Snapchat allows them to have those private conversations, and then it goes away. Um, so that's another thing to be mindful of. Uh, when utilizing this platform. But overall, the privacy, which a lot of times, like we said, teens, when they get into those stages, they want their privacy and independence. And Snapchat is allowing them to do that in a sense. Yeah. Uh, but what we can do uh, with Snapchat as an activity. Yeah. Let me touch on that, go back to sure. the previous slide. So first of all, I wanna say for the camera quality, Snapchat's camera quality is amazing. A lot of the times I'm recording and I have an iPhone. I try to keep the most up-to-date ones, but still you go on Snapchat, the camera quality is amazing. So that's one, that's why people use it. Um, a lot of this isn't just stuff we made up. So we did interviews with kids, youth, um, teenagers, like preteens, 
you know, some that's on the elementary level just to kind of get their feel for it. And then as far as Snapchat, I know that a lot of teachers that I've spoke to in the past or that we've done this training, they've kind of raised some concerns about the Snapchats and things like that. I have seen this platform grow people's programs and you can't be afraid of it. You just have to know how to utilize it and navigate it and be careful. And again, like we're going to talk about some of those precautions, but you can't be scared of it. So any of these platforms that we're telling you about, they're there for you to utilize and they can help build your program. They can help build relationships with the students. Um, but more importantly, they'll just kind of bring you up to date, uh, up to speed as far as like the trends in the social media. Whether you are someone that likes social media or not, the kids like it. And if you want to appeal to them and you want Johnny off his phone, this is how you do it. So go ahead. <laughs> Remember, if you can beat them, join them. And that's exactly that's, what that's it is. That's what we're saying. So an activity that you can do through Snapchat is a video compilation. Uh, so you can create a series of videos or pictures uh, that are center, uh, centered around a universal storyline um, or a central idea and theme. And that putting all those things together, of course, is a compilation. Uh, as we mentioned, this is the number one platform. Um, and what we did, and you'll see it in this, um, is make this educational at the same time. Um, there's different ways to incorporate things, um, and I guess the best uh, analogy for this is that we've seen books turn into movies nonstop for decades, and so there's things that you can do through Snapchat that will um, allow you to do the same thing, and I think our example will kind of highlight this, so we'll go ahead and move into that activity example that we have for you. Goldilocks and Three Bears. Mm. Oh, that soup is too hot. Let me try this one. Mmm, that soup is just right. <laughs> Somebody ate my fridge. Somebody ate my cookie. Wait a minute. Somebody's been wearing my jacket. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that, and it is so fun and engaging. I can tell you as adults, we had a fun time doing this. Imagine giving a little bit more liberty to students to do this together, and it makes it more fun and engaging for them. Um, and as you saw, we tied this to Goldilocks and Three Bears, uh, a simple short story and book that has been known uh, for years uh, for students. So it has a literary a literacy component to it you can do the same thing uh, within your program tying a universal story to it yeah and that video really only took a few minutes to make i my colleagues at work they're over me they're over us because we come around we do these videos they have no clue what's going on we just tell them to get into character right but your but your kids let's just say this is an activity that you want to do this is something you can draw out this doesn't have to be 10 minutes this can be a whole class period this can be a whole 45 minutes this can happen over a span of a week you know each day you can decide to do something different we can pick stories we can write scripts we can pick characters we can incorporate costumes you could do all of this just to make this story and it doesn't have to stop at snapchat so yes you can record on snapchat you can put the filters you can put the emojis you could put some text on there you could do that that is beautiful but you can also make that into a storybook of your own you can take pictures you could do it outside of, you can record the videos outside of snapchat then upload them and then you can also have them you can also take this same video and put it on youtube like it's so many ways to use the same content in multiple ways and multiple facets in it's again, it's promoting your program. Like if I am a kid, youth, they talk, right? Let's have a candid conversation right now. You talk, you talk about the programs that you guys have at your schools. And so one of the things is, is like, why should I go to after school? Well, and then it's a, one kid is like, well, we do this, this, and this. And you know, we do this, this, and this. And it's like that youth that rather be at home you know, eating their snack on their phone, on their social media, watching YouTube, that you can brag and say, we do the same thing. We have our snacks. We have good snacks. We have our, we might have a dinner or something because some schools provide, you know, like meals on wheels and things like that. And then like you're doing the same thing. So I just think that it is so many ways to spin this and you just have to get creative. But most of you guys work with youth. And to me, if you work with youth, 
most times you're already a creative person. So just tap into that. Tap and into going that. into what we are currently facing, which is obviously many schools being uh, closed and the phase in and phase out and the how parents feel and families feel about allowing their students to be back in school or preferring them to stay home. This is one thing, again, that can be done in any setting. It could be done in the classroom yep. or it could be yep. done at home. Yep. Um, and I think that's very a uh, key component because what I've seen in the different organizations and clients that I work with uh, within after school is we don't know how we can reach the students and what we can do uh, to engage them because a lot of the times we're sending things home, but they're not being utilized. But we also have to remember what they are actually utilizing and how we can uh, tap into that, which is, again, is social media. Um, it has been an interesting time within the year that we have been uh, facing this uh, here in the United States on how things are shifting uh, in terms of in-person, virtual, and or hybrid. Again, this is a hybrid situation where hybrid. you can do this in the classroom if you have students that are present within after school, or you can do you can assign this to them while they're at home or wherever they may be. Yes. And that brings us into TikTok because TikTok definitely showed its face. It became a universal face almost overnight during the pandemic. Everybody that said they would never get a TikTok got one because we were doing what? We were all sitting in the house kind of bored for lack of a better words, right? I mean, and it was just something fun to do. But TikTok is a social media network. It's user generated through videos. Most people are lip singing to popular songs. So actually, that was when TikTok was created, that was the most popular feature of it. But now everything is about hashtags, challenges, memes, um, just posting whatever it is that you're doing. Um, I have a sorority sister. She is a health inspector and she recently posted like going into different kitchens and just talking about like, you know, is this good or bad? So it's just so many ways to kind of use TikTok now. Like it's interesting and it's fun and you can go down a rabbit hole if you spend some time on there. Like it, it takes nothing. You think that Facebook has you hooked. Try being on TikTok. And the biggest thing about TikTok, what makes it um, very popular right now is the ability to go viral. That is very big. So YouTube, right now on YouTube, if you get enough subscriptions, if you get enough people sharing your videos and stuff like that, you can monetize off of YouTube. So this is also important for your classroom accounts. Let's just say you post something and it goes viral. That might be some additional funds that come into your program that you didn't even see happening. But TikTok has the ability to do that as well. I don't think that the I don't think the monetizing is as solid as YouTube, but if your video goes viral, that is something that can happen. So that's just another little token to put in your mind. But that's really what TikTok is. And it literally it makes people become celebrities overnight. So that's that's kind of what you are dealing with with TikTok. And for as far as youth interest, you're creating, you're watching videos, challenges, and impersonations. And again, that same little storyline we just used, you can use and incorporate that into a TikTok video. Um, and to show you that, we we <laughs> was a little disrespectful to some of our coworkers in the office, you know, to make this video it's just to show. Disrespectful it was thing. professionally disrespectful. You know, because we want to show you this video to just kind of see what we can do. And I'll actually give you the, I'll let you know what I, the details as far as what I did to actually create this video after you see it. So just go ahead and judge us. Oh, I forgot. I'm so ready to see the video. <laughs> okay, so the, what the, the activity that we're going to do in the video is a scavenger hunt. And so the objective is, you know, youth will be able to choose items that belong to specific categories given by the teacher and will perform this in a remote video session. Now, obviously, this is something that you can do in the classroom, but this was definitely created for a virtual setting because, you know, like a lot of the times we were, you know, a lot of the students were at home and household items, everybody has household items. One thing I would say is to just be sensitive to what you think people have and do not have, you know, so I would make a big huge list and just see how many items can a person find and it could be ridiculous things it could be toilet tissue it could be you know like a penny on the floor it could be you know like just a drink out of your refrigerator it could be anything just to kind of make the activity fun and a lot of times you guys send the activities and assignments with the parents so they're aware of these things that are going on but um it's something um 
I think it would be a very fun and a cute idea, especially if you're doing a hybrid, if you're in a hybrid setting. Um, but I definitely wanted you guys to see this in action. And so that's why we're so excited about this video. We get ready to show you. <laughs> I want you to scavenge your home, and I want you to find as many of these household items that you can find in your family office, okay? You have five minutes to find all of these items. You ready? Yes. Set? Okay, let's go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Okay, 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 okay. 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 This, 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 what? Okay, I want this one right here. All right. The whole thing, the whole thing. Let's... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's go. So as you can see, um, we we entered some spaces to uh, succeed in the in the scavenger hunt. Um, some people were caught off guard. Uh, some people's items were were taken. Um, let us be clear that no office furniture nor uh, colleague relationship was damaged in the filming of this uh, TikTok. Uh, but nonetheless, um, this is just one idea that we came up with that that can be done and. This is our personal idea, yeah. uh, to be yeah. clear on it. But there's so many challenges that take place uh, at any point in time um, that you guys can hop on and make them your own or, or, you know, simply just utilize this simple idea. But again, this is just the introduction. Mm -hmm. Take it, run with it and make it your own. And you will you will see how how students once once you're on something that they're on, they're going to invest themselves in it. Um, and that and that's what you want within your after school program is or out of school time program is that you want students to invest themselves in something you're providing to them where it can be engaging and meaningful and productive. Um, There's so many things that, that can happen out of TikTok. Right. So just to be extreme, just to let you know how extreme I am, I created a TikTok just for this purpose. And all I did was literally with my iPhone, I had. Uh, this guy right here, this amazing guy right here, be my videographer. So he followed me around. It, honestly, he had no idea what I was really doing at first until I just started doing it. But that's just kind of the team that we are. We just kind of work like that. Um, but I, we recorded the video. So he was recording me or just a regular video. So if you have an iPhone, Android, it doesn't matter. You have a video feature recording us going into different rooms just to get the different scenes, right? And then once we did that, I uploaded it onto TikTok because they have that feature where you can upload videos. And then I was able to um, put some effects on there and then also put some transitions in there. And so that's kind of like, even what you see in this field shot, that's a, that's a transition. Um, so I put transitions in there. I added some music at the top of it. I don't want to go to work. Work. It's so funny. It's like, we don't want to go to work. But at the same time, I'm still in people's office supplies. <laughs> so make it make sense. It doesn't need to make sense. It was great. We had a fun time. And I can't wait to actually show this to my other colleagues. Because yesterday, all they know is I was coming in their offices, taking things, and you were getting their natural reactions. And that's that's why I didn't want to tell them, because I wanted that natural reaction. But anyway, that's the details as to how we came up with that video in, you know, it is what it is. But again, a scavenger hunt with your students would be so much fun. So just giving you some perspective and again, some ideas. And like I said, at the end of this uh, workshop, please share your ideas with us because we would love to share them with someone else. Um, so tips for creating engaging activities on social media. So we have given you some of the most popular platforms. We have given you some activities, but again, you have to go in and incorporate these things inside of your programs. And that's something that we can't necessarily give to you. That's something you have to intentionally think about when it comes to your students and their needs. 
So the first thing is engagement, right? So engagement, just make sure that your activities are fun and engaging. The last thing any youth want to do is to sit inside of a boring after school program. And that's not to say that your after school program has to be centered around uh, social media. This is just one element that we know that youth are participating in that can help you make your program just a little bit more engaging. But if your program is running numbers, then you're probably already on the right track. So we're just giving you another tip to kind of help you out because you are already the expert in delivering that direct service anyway. The next thing we want to give you is ownership. Okay, okay. Um, ownership. So you want to give youth the freedom to create, explore, and to use their voices. So again, instead of competing with youth, we're not competing for their engagement. We're kind of just incorporating their engagement into our everyday activities and giving them a voice. So even something as small as like, okay, class, let's do a TikTok. Let's brainstorm different ideas or different activities we can do to make a TikTok video for Easter. I don't know, for Valentine's Day, uh, for the principal. Like, you know, you could always just make different little things and give them a give them a rhyme or reason to exist in your program and to have a great time and to showcase their voices. You'll be surprised at how creative they actually are. And then the third tip would be academic. You know, at the end of the day, we are still all educators in some sort of way. Um, and we need to incorporate that into everything we do, but make them feel like it's not something that they're doing in that eight hour class day that they already have. You, it's almost like you have to incorporate the academics without incorporating it in a sense. Like tell them it, it's there, but you're not telling them that it's there. And they don't even know that they are, they are incorporating some of their math skills. They are incorporating some of their literacy skills. Writing a script that's writing and that's reading. Like we're incorporating that. So just make sure that that's that because again, that helps sell your program. That, it, that helps sell your program to administrators. That makes the case for allowing allowing social media classroom accounts to exist that makes a case for that that makes a case for the parents you know like yes we're having fun but there also are academic elements to this as well and even for the students like just letting them know hey you guys did this oh my god your writing skills are amazing you are getting so much better and maybe sometimes being able to connect with the teachers you know I am probably reaching at this point but I'm just giving you ideas and then last but not least, character development, you know, find ways to include SEL spaces and, you know, allowing kids to, you know, kind of build their character and elaborate on their skill sets and allowing them to work in team. This all helps for their character development, because what we know is that kids become adults and we want those adults to be healthy and we want them to have healthy mindsets and we want them to know how to play and work with one another. And so it starts in the classroom, it starts with you, it starts with us, it starts with our activities, it starts with what we choose to be intentional about. Absolutely, and as, as we're going into it, also allowing them to express themselves, but when we're expressing ourselves, there's also an element of, of education that you're also incorporating in terms of knowing how to properly express yourself. So having social media etiquette is vital as you are as an educator who is adding this into the lives uh, and your program of students. Uh, so having a code of a customary code that is polite, acceptable on social media, which includes spelling and punctuation. Again, when we're talking about social media, it gets informal and we know that, but also having them remember that hey, there are certain moments in time where we can where we can add these informalities. But for the most part, you do want to have proper spelling and punctuation. Having likes and comments uh, be done responsibly. Um, if situations do arise, you know, you have to address those situations. Um, and as monitors of these social media platforms that you may be utilizing, whether it's a Facebook group, whether it's on YouTube, you have some control over these things, um, as well as making parents aware of, of what is happening and taking place. Um, of course, utilizing appropriate language and behavior. Um, that's also very um, key to, to this and being kind. Um, there's, there's so many ways social media is being utilized, uh, some negative, some positive, uh, but it's also in, within ourselves as users of these platforms to take responsibility and you know educate our students who are gonna be using this probably for the rest of their lives. I really doubt this is ever going to go away. It has been introduced in our lives. And so we have to be the educators as well of those students to properly utilize these platforms and social media. 
Also, as educators and school districts, uh, however you may operate, being aware of policies um, and laws, uh, such as the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, also known uh, short term as COPA. It's a primary uh, law concerning the disclosure of online data uh, for children under the age of 13. Sites that target children can collect personal information about children without uh, first providing a written notice of the site's disclosure and practices and obtaining parental consent. That's usually that long scrolling uh, feature that you have to click on when you agree to something. It's also very important to read those things, um, whether it's uh, you as the educator who is utilizing this, but as well as the parents, making them aware. And even if it takes you uh, to having someone from your program read through all of it and be very clear so you can at least provide the key points and elements of what you are obtaining as it relates to the data of students under the age of 13, uh, which is ha has been happening a lot now uh, within the pandemic because students uh, increasing their, their usage of digital and social media has skyrocketed within the past year. If it wasn't already high, it's higher than ever. Um, so being aware of all those things and notifying uh, individuals and families of the students and the students themselves, what's actually happening. And of course, the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, also known as FERPA. It's a federal law that protects the privacy of student education records uh, as it applies to all schools that receive funds under the applicable program of the U.S. Department of Education, which is a large majority of schools. Also being proactive, uh, releasing the FERPA, it's an optional thing, but it's also uh, something that is very, very highly encouraged. Uh, having that release form for social media assignments um, helps in the long run. Uh, I know one thing that we've done here a lot within Case for Kids is uh, incorporate a broad statement, but it's very clear and precise uh, to allow parents to have that release up front, like a, um, a media release form, uh, including that in your registration form uh, helps a lot. And being very clear, um, if a parent asks you a question, you can you can let them know, hey, we're thinking about doing something of this nature. It's not for sure yet, but we want you to know it's part of our program and we want to see if we have your permission. Um, it kind of eliminates a barrier of hindrance when you're trying to find out who is not allowed and who is allowed as you were assigning these different uh, uh, practices. Also following your district policies, if you work with a school district or organization, whatever policies they have for social media, please make sure that you uh, collaborate with them and have that clear communication of notifying the school and saying, hey, we're attempting of doing this activity with students. Uh, is there any policy that may or may not allow us to do this? Uh, being very clear about that, the media release, of course, as we've mentioned, making sure you have some kind of media release for every child before you post them in any picture or video is important. And also personal versus professional. Um, I know that's something I practice and many of us have, having those accounts uh, be separated because I know between eight to five or seven to five or seven to six, we're one person uh, who have these professional ideas but we're also allowed after those time frames to have personal ideas. But when we mesh these things together, sometimes they can uh, create a little bit of controversy that we don't want. So having those professional accounts and those personal accounts be separate is very, very uh, encouraged so that there is, no, there is a dividing line between who you are as the educator and who you are as an adult uh, in your personal time so that students also don't see something that they shouldn't and it creates a problem amongst families uh, who are who are concerned as to what their kids should or should not be seeing. And again, about the part about being proactive. So we know that social media is a risk. Anything you do in life is technically a risk, right? Um, it's just about, it's just a matter of you being aware and being proactive when taking those risks. So again, we have tried to provide you with some some safety approaches as far as activities and maybe what you can do but you know at the end of the day maybe it's 
maybe it's advocating for a personal iPad at your school or a personal account or a classroom account, again, that is governed not just by you, you know, like so that there can be other controls. Maybe it's governed also by a principal. Maybe it's governed by an assistant. Maybe it's, you know, not you, it's not in the hands of a student, you know, that can potentially make this go, you know, all kinds of ways. It's just about being proactive. And even with the FERPA, um, I know that that applies, you know, just, you know, student data in regards to any other personal thing too. But it also applies for social media. And what you have to know about social media is that there aren't any laws that's specifically about social media. However, sometimes when things go left, a lawyer will go into the court and argue in a different way in a court of law and use certain things that are out there to kind of make a case. So it's like you just really want to be proactive. And so when it comes to youth and their identity, please, you have to get these media releases from these parents. You have to be you have to make sure that the student is under understands and that the youth understands everybody involved understands before doing anything, you know, make sure you have those things in place to not only protect them, but to protect you as well in your district that you work for. It's like I said, I've seen people do this successfully, but we've also seen, we have all seen where it can go sour and it can go south if the, if the, the measures aren't taken. So I really wanted to stress that. We really want to stress that. Um, and again, like keeping that account professional is the best way to go about it. And again, you know, like it's a risk. But there's etiquette that can be involved in, you know, in maneuvering this risk. And I think that you all are capable of doing it. We wouldn't be having this workshop if we didn't think that people weren't capable of doing it because we see it and we operate in it. And we know that it's a really good tool if it's used right. So and it's always about having that clear yeah. communication again. Social media is a form of communication and being clear and thorough about how you're utilizing it there then there should be very little room for anyone to not know what is happening and taking place okay. something to remember is i'm going to quote this very thoughtful insightful person that i've gotten to encounter it in my time you're not competing with youth you're helping them do what they are already doing i think that and that is a quote by uh, the lovely chastity celestine wherever she may be at this moment in time um but <laughs> Um, again, this is a tool that we want you guys to utilize. Um, I have, I, I've shared this a lot of times with different organizations, different programs I've gotten to do is that we have these tools. And if we see that someone is in a corner and we want them to engage with us, but we see them not coming to us, it's also within ourselves to go to them and try to figure out how we can work how we can provide to them. That's exactly what you can do with social media. Don't see it as something that will detract from your program. Take it, harness it, and utilize it as an enhancement to your program that already exists, an enhancement to the great work that you are already doing. That's what we want you guys to remember when you walk away and knowing how you can utilize social media. But I think we're reaching our time. I think we're within the time frame almost. We want you guys to reflect. If there's any questions that you have, we have a few minutes. I know uh, for sure, you know, what, what are you taking from this? We want to know what you're taking from this. What are you learning? How are you going to run with some of these ideas uh, so that you can utilize them within your programs? We want to know. We want you to share it with us. Um, we're, we're open to it. We have a little bit more time to look at the comment chat now. I think we address any questions that were happening throughout the presentation if there's anything that we missed feel free to share it with us right now yeah um and our contact information go to the next slide our contact information is right here so if there's something that we did not cover if there's additional um ideas that you may have if there even if there is something to where like maybe you have a good idea but don't know how to execute it you just kind of need some help navigating that we would do our best. I think collectively, we know how to handle these social medias pretty well. Do our best to kind of give you some ideas and give you some traction as to what to do. And I'm so impersonal that I don't mind like, you know, like doing a Zoom or a FaceTime call or team call or whatever it is and trying to walk you through on my phone, like, you know, 
the way to do it. So we're here to help. That's all we want to do. And we want you to be successful in your endeavors with social media. We don't want you to be scared of it. We want you to go out there and be confident and, you know, have fun with it and have fun with the youth. We've also provided a list of activities. Yes, um, that our, will, friends, that, our friends from beyond should be adding those on yes. to the chat. So yes. try to download them before you leave today. We did uh, have some handouts available for you guys to also take with you uh, with some do's and don'ts, some yeah. activities as well. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to, um, like I said, for the activities, there are multiple activities. Um, I kind of kept the descriptions very brief and wanted you guys, guys to use your imagination. But again, if you have questions, specific questions about how to execute it, feel free to shoot us an email. You have our phone numbers and our email information on here. And we are just so grateful that you came and you spent some time with us. I hope that it was informative and it was fun and it was funny and it was full of life. And that's really, we wanted to make your session kind of fun and not so, you know, like luxury. So if that's even, is that even a word? We, <laughs> hey, just up. like the social media acronyms, we can make them words. Uh, but again, yes, as Chastity said, we thank you guys for your time and consideration. We hope that you, again, walk away with some benefits from utilizing social media um, and in making, again, an enhancement to your program. I think that's something that as uh, individuals who have worked within and studied some of these mediums that you, again, just take with it and use it to your best advantage. And I think our friends from beyond have something to share as well. Thank you both, Chastity and Adrian. We really appreciate your time. You guys were terrific. And I just want to say to everybody who is still on the meeting, share this with your friends. We're going to do this every week until December. So please spread the word. Um, these are free webinars, professional learning experiences that clearly help uh, create better programs. So again, Thank you so much for your time. You guys were fantastic. Um, we just want to remind everybody that we will be back in Orlando February 23rd to the 26th. Registration will open soon. I highly recommend you take advantage of the cheap airfare now before things pick up again. Um, so that will keep an eye out for that. And please join us again next week for our uh, follow-up series to the Beyond School Hours Conference. Thanks again for joining us. We really appreciate it.